In this week's episode, I'm talking to Denis Denkovich from Preply in the Ukraine about how he got into sourcing, sourcing as a career, and what he's working on now. This is episode 17 of the Sourcing Challenge Show, and I'm your host, Mark Longwin. I kicked off the interview by asking Dennis how he got into sourcing. Back in uh, 214, uh, a friend of mine who owned the recruitment agency mm-hmm. um, asked me to help him, uh, you know, to make such a switch to the digital area and to start hiring IT professionals. Uh, the reason was, uh, you know, I always was uh, really deeply involved in all technical stuff. I mean. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't a programmer, but I I really enjoy you know surfing the internet just uh, without any sense. I mean just <laughs> yeah just regarding my curiosity. Actually, my mission was to uh, you know make him processes more digital, make them more automated, and one more really important thing to be able to screen candidates for their uh, technical I mean backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And actually, this is something which he was missing i mean uh, he wasn't able you know feel comfortable in all of these keywords and all of these technologies and uh, this is where i came up for for so i mean uh, you know i wasn't expected that uh, sourcing becomes something uh, so important you know and uh, my main actually my main activity mm. in my life i would say that uh, i started sourcing uh, because I want to be. I want to become became a recruiter. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. For that time, I haven't uh, different vision because, like you know, the friend of mine, he was a recruiter. So uh, I think that yeah, like um, maybe maybe I should start sourcing. You know, to one day become a recruiter. Yeah. Uh, but uh, hopefully, a couple of years ago, I met Martin Lee. And uh, I was attending uh, his awesome training session uh, when, he, when he was attended Kiev. And um, he told me that, Dennis, you know, the thing is that uh, sources actually earns, you know, even more than recruiters first thing. And yeah, and one more thing that um, it's not, you're, you're not obliged to, be, to become a recruiter, you know, if you will be successful at sourcing. <laughs> and that moment uh, I thought, all oh, right. <laughs> then I can, you know, just focus on sourcing and do all my best to uh, cover all all the knowledge available around on the internet. And yeah, and I think that uh, starting from that point, I, I really appreciate Martin uh, Martin's advices and as well as uh, all the training session which I attended uh, because um, it was really so inspiring, you know. Uh, it was a kind of inspiration for me because I used to thought that this is my path to recruitment, but um, you know, I, I was never uh, thinking that this is something which I will uh, do through all of my life. You're other than kind of you're doing Martin's training. Um, how did you pick up on all the the kind of skills or or the things that you're doing now? <laughs> uh, so I think that uh, I'm really lucky because I have a really super curious, you know, mind and. Uh, so I always uh, trying to find an answers, or at least if not find, at least to you know uh, see this uh, path which I can move in, move in from to, to to get the skills. Because mm-hmm. uh, like I think that um, one thing that we should uh, stick to is that we need to be creative as a like as a human beings, you know, because obviously that. Uh, all of this, you know, talks uh, about machines and artificial intelligence, and that they will move us away from our from what we are doing. And uh, I think still that it, it, it is not true. Just in case we will be continuously developing ourselves, and the way we look at the things, you know, and uh, even the way how easy we are able to gain some knowledge, you know. So yeah, um, yeah this, the thing is is that you need to be ready, you know, to stuck and you need to be ready to ask an advice, to spend a lot of hours, you know, diving deeper and deeper into those or another specific topic. And uh, this is how you, you, can, you can, you know, still be in a sourcing and still, still be in, uh, like, in demand. 
I would say. Maybe you've been very active in the different communities, especially the, the growth hacking for recruiters um, and sharing a, a lot of research that you find and a lot of knowledge. Where, where do you kind of pick up on everything and, and how, much, you know, how much research do you do on the internet? Because it seems like every week you found something else that you, yeah, you think yeah. is, uh, is, is interesting for everybody and you share it with everybody. Yeah, you know, I was um, really inspired by Gil de Costa uh, in SourceCon community. I, I would say that he was the first person uh, who was, you know, such a masterpiece of all of this knowledge being constantly shared. And uh, uh, I think that um, I set kind of a goal for myself to uh, look for some interesting stuff during the week, at least, you know, three times a week and I spent uh, 15 minutes uh, for each session and I'm just using a couple of um, Google Advanced Search which are uh, built for, you know, X-ray educational resources and stuff like this. And um, other thing is, so the most of the content I've ever found, I found on uh, being stored on Amazon Web Services or uh, WordPress content uh, cloud service. So uh, I would say that's just simple Boolean string, so, sorry, so just simple X-ray string, um, in URL, VP, uh, content, slash, and then you, you should put, just put the year yeah, you're looking for, and then you can play around the keywords or play around the in title and in URL character. Yeah. Because like, yeah, if you, will, if you will specify that you are looking just for, you know, PDF files or, uh, for example, sourcing or uh, talent mapping or something like this in URL or in title, you will get a bunch of results and then you just need to like dive deeper and figure out if that matters for you uh, or no. Yeah, and the thing that uh, constantly uh, looking for something is something which can help you, you know, to get all of these tips and hints and share it with everybody. But tell me a bit about what you do today then. You're, you're more in a, are you still in a kind of saucer role or you're more in a, a full stack recruiter role? Um, so uh, nowadays I'm working with Preply. We'll be, we are building a global marketplace for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are currently focusing on learning languages specifically. And um, I would say that uh, my role, you know, uh, changed a little bit like during my journey with Preply because I joined as a full cycle recruiter. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is that, you know, in, uh, like in Ukraine, we don't have sourcing and recruitment functions being like uh, completely separated. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was the reason, uh, like when I was joining Perply, you know, there was no opening uh, for sourcer. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> that's why, uh, you know, I needed to transform somehow myself, you know, with the, obviously with the appreciation of managers and of the founders. Um, and uh, this is something I'm really proud of because um, I would say that I'm uh, at the very end of building, you know, the sourcing function here at Perply, like from the ground up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because uh, obviously that uh, pretty much everyone, you know, knows that sourcing is exist, <laughs> but the other thing to figure out that it really matters to, to have it, to have them separate uh, from, from recruitment and uh, to, to start getting more value from that. That was a challenge I, I was like. I think I'm at the very end of uh, achieving. How did you go about that? Like, where did, where did you start to kind of show them and, and, and build that function and, and show them the value? Yeah, so I would say that uh, a lot of value for this very case brings me Shelley Stecker's book, The Source and Method, uh, because, uh, and, and one more really useful source for me was uh, Balar's blog. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, regarding how he built the sourcing function and the sourcing team. It was really super exciting. And what I was trying to do, uh, I was trying to implement all of this knowledge to our like uh, case, you know, and uh, to make some, um, to, to put some parallels just, just to founders to see, you know, the uh, similar things between, you know, like uh, proven expertise of Shelley and uh, like I always, you know, reference that I'm, I'm not just uh, bringing the ideas from my head, 
and from my uh, yeah, from my imagination but it, it, it's just like you know proven practices and stuff yeah. like this and this is something which uh, definitely like ha ha had some impact on founders vision i would say uh, hopefully recently we hired a head of recruitment from booking.com mm -hmm. and uh, when she joined like she really helped me you know to move all the scenes further and uh, finally start using them in terms of your the kind of roles that you recruit for then is it both uh, to build the, the team from uh, from Preply and to to get their um, the kind of choosers as well, or, or how does that work? Um, so uh, you, you mean the scope of the roles I'm sourcing for, right? Yeah. Uh, pretty different. So we are currently building, uh, we already opened one more office in Berlin and currently looking to hire marketing and product people. Okay. Uh, yeah, to, to have them in Berlin because it wasn't so real, you know, to relocate them to Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, can, it can be difficult, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I would still say that uh, there, is, there are a couple of benefits, you know, relocation to Ukraine. Uh, pretty obvious that there are not so much, but still, the, you know, the, the cost of life is pretty cheap. Yeah. And, like, we have a pretty friendly people, pretty, uh, you know, interesting cuisine, I would say, like, many interesting stuff, but, yeah, uh, still, like, European people... Uh, usually relying, you know, on the quality in general of life uh, and safety, which is uh, like, yeah, definitely not not about Ukraine. Uh, not that much, I mean, obviously. Nice. <laughs> that was the reason, like, uh, why we decided to uh, have this office opening in Berlin. And currently we are working on uh, build the talent mapping for um, our very, like, specific technologies yeah. and, uh, yeah, specific cases because... Uh, we need developers, we need full stack developers, you know, to have experience with implementing real time collaboration technology, like really advanced GraphQL engineers and stuff like that. Mm, that's why currently I'm doing my like deep research on uh, education technology marketplaces, mm -hmm. first of all. Uh, then, like, I would say not our direct, but maybe indirect competitors. And uh, then I will just do research regarding the technologies we are using. Uh, so I, I, I already created, you know, all of these possible sources, you know, of yeah. uh, finding, yeah, 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 and engaging the candidates. And one more thing I'm currently focusing on is uh, diversifying our sourcing strategy. Yeah. Specifically, yeah, because we have, by the way, it, it is really uh, achievement, I would say, for us, because we have, the most diverse team in Ukraine uh, is a product company. Yeah. yeah. And this is also, I think, something uh, which helps us to bring more foreign and diverse people on board, you know, because like we already have a lot of them and uh, it's it much easier for uh, different people to, you know, to make this decision uh, to move. Uh, yeah for another country and, and to join the people because they like they're aware that uh, we already get there we already have a multinational environment and yeah and it works for us in terms of your channels or, or tools how are you kind of set up and and how do you achieving that both in terms of yeah diversity and and finding these people in the first place yeah so in terms of diversity it's definitely a specific boolean strings which i'm using using for uh it, it doesn't matter or searching linkedin advanced search or x-ray google uh, so it's a kind of specific signs of racial or gender or ethical um uh, yeah signs that people are related to those or another groups mm -hmm. and uh, one more thing i would say that uh what about the sources and the tools you know uh, I, I was having a situation when i get stuck when I, uh, you know, get my trial period ended <laughs> with, one, with one tool. And, uh, you know, it, I, don't, I don't even want to share the name of this tool because it was uh, really so, uh, so, so for a while ago, I mean, that, uh, but still the, the case and the lesson we shall learn from, from this very situation is that uh, I shouldn't rely, you know, on one or even two 
specific tools yeah. uh, because like uh, everything is changed so fast and like uh, I'm not sure that if, if we will stick to even for example top three of, of the tools or sources I'm not sure that like tomorrow uh, two or even all of them will work for us and one more thing you know um, again back then in two, two, 2014 I was you know so excited that people can uh, type uh, Google X-ray queries and type this just by, by by their hands. You know, yeah. started right inside. Da, 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 and uh, but still, I would say that uh, when you get this skill and when you were able to, you know, uh, just create. So this is when actually creativity comes up. You know, when you are uh, not um, not afraid of just doing it by your hands. Yeah. And you are like so familiar with the structure and uh, like with the expected res results, I would say that you are just playing around this, putting it all in the brackets or quotes or stuff like this. And uh, so I think that the moment when I start getting a lot of value from Google X Ray search is when I, you know, uh, start typing these queries by my hands. I mean, and, yeah. yeah, and don't rely, for example, I really. Uh, super thankful to Irina Shamaeva and to mm -hmm. her uh, 300 Boolean strings book, you know. <laughs> yeah, but until that moment, like, uh, until I was just redirecting from, like, from her links to, to the results, uh, I, I wasn't, wasn't getting a lot of sense from it. But, yeah, when I started to do it by my own, I think that uh, that was the moment when I realized that, yeah, oh my God, I, I will, I will, be, I will be here, and I will, I will be rocking, really. What's something that you're working on now that 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 is, uh, yeah, that you feel excited about? So I, I'm currently working on my. Uh, I will be speaking on social recruiting days mm -hmm. uh, conference, which will take place in Berlin in October. I can't remember the date. I twenty uh, first of October. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And uh, the topic of my talk uh, would be sourcing as a mindset and why you should treat it as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, like analyzing all of my mistakes that I've ever me ever did, like regarding my expectations, you know, or uh, or just regarding how everything was happening. Like I want to share um, actually how I how I get there. First of all, how I. By the way, your question regarding the content is also, uh, you know, something which I want to put in my presentation and share uh, different ways for people, like, you know, the most useful uh, from my previous experience and those which, when, you know, when you type your search and even hit enter and then, like, every, so all the results are super relevant and then you are super excited about them. Uh, yeah, and, and actually, uh, I will try to explain people how to focus on sourcing from the very beginning, you know, yeah. not to try to uh, have this additional step uh, before you will get to recruitment. Uh, yeah, because I think that it's really important to understand from the very beginning, like, because, uh, you know, it can be fr really frustrated if you will think like you are moving to something like further, but currently you are just doing it because you need to do that yeah it, 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 yeah it, it wouldn't work i guess and uh, yeah so i'm trying to organize all my knowledge you know in a such a kanban board yeah um split it to three different topics actually theory practice and tools mm -hmm. and uh, then like uh, to build something like really exciting and really resourceful and one more thing I, I, I want to try to you know create uh, short videos which I won't be share like during my speech uh, but still all of these videos will be available for the people uh, you know afterwards to dig into and to, to, go, out deeper, out. to go deeper into the things yeah okay. yeah because from my perspective, you know, uh, even when I, when I remember in like uh, Martin's lead uh, training, but you know, it, it was super successful, I would say, and it was a masterpiece, but still, uh, the thing I missed is, is, you know, when I are back home and open these slides 
and and from one moment you 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 realize that you are not so familiar with the topic yeah uh, and you like uh, i was wondering if i can somehow you know provide this experience uh, in more richer way and what i decided to do is to record loom videos with uh, briefly explanations and step step by step guides uh, for 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 every hut because it's too boring to present uh, something like uh, as a keynote you know all of these people uh, sitting like this and uh, understand like uh, maybe 20 percent of what you are trying to explain them yeah. Uh, yeah that's why i will try to focus you know on inspirational things and uh, on things on things we can actually discuss with the audience uh, but all of this touchy and hacking stuff will be included in my pitch deck, which like I will share with everyone after the conference. Presentation should be something which, uh, you know, when you leave the scene and you leave the floor, uh, people should be inspired by something, not, you know, overweighted with all of this information and all of this, because uh, like I remember when Martin uh, told me that, you know, silence is also a, really great you know moment to uh to people to sing you know to be inspired of what you were saying uh yeah but but, but still i think that it should be more uh interactive i would say and the audience should be involved into the talk and yeah, uh, yeah and should participate actively because someone can fall asleep <laughs> uh, and for you what are you still kind of missing or where, where would you like to see your sourcing career go you know, I would say that I'm definitely missing sourcing community, like sustainable community in Ukraine, mm -hmm. because, you know, analyzing the winners of all the amazing hiring hackathons. Uh, it seems to be, yeah, three companies in the Ukraine always yeah. being in the top 10 and 20. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that uh, this is a really strong reason, you know, to, to maintain it and to, uh, to provide the possibility, you know, to become like uh, as much professional as SourceCon is, and uh, you know, you never know like how it goes. But uh, the thing uh, uh, I really uh, look forward is someone, you know, because uh, for now I'm too busy to to actually to do that job. I mean, to uh, gain all of these people, to put them in the list, and start doing something. So hopefully, uh, someone will like. Uh, who is more available than me will start doing that and like we will have our first meetup very soon uh, yeah but still if this is like if this one happened uh, i will come up uh, with my efforts bringing there definitely <laughs> because i think that we have pretty powerful uh, informational technology in the ecosystem so why not to have you know uh, perspective european sourcing community as yeah. well no I, I could definitely see uh a local chapter of SourceCon in Kiev uh, being very successful. Yeah, but it's not, you know, uh, we don't even aware of each other. I mean, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, like we, we, everyone at SourceCon, everyone like liking the posts and commenting, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, we will obviously get uh, more value if we will, you know, know each other, have a network, have a Slack group and stuff like that. That's the big thing for me as well. It's being in those community either on on Facebook or I was lucky to work with Aaron Lintz in an old in a company a couple of years ago and that kind of built my my network up of just being introduced to different people in the sourcing community right I also really like uh, everything which Aaron was shared mm -hmm. like ever I really think that he's a, a geeky one and uh, <laughs> definitely <yeah. laughs> Oh, now he's in he's in my team as uh, again yeah i saw that you at thoughtworks uh, have has really like a uh, powerful powerful team yeah 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 so you are like your company is okay with remote workers right we're all we're all working from home ah oh everyone um we're a distributed team and we're working agile so we got you know daily stand-ups and we know what we're all working on we have our trello board so we know what you know what's next and we know what everybody's uh, which which role everybody's working on and where the car where their jobs are yeah it's interesting you know because i, I also really inspired by such companies as buffers up here i mean uh like completely remote teams 
yeah, I really think that uh, this is something we, we will uh, work on in the future. Like we don't need to be in an office to do what we do. And if you want the best people in, in sourcing, you're going to have that flexibility. I'm hoping more companies going to see that as well. Because I tend, to, especially for sourcers, yeah. it tends to be managers who don't quite understand what we do. So they want to manage us. They want to you know, look over our shoulder. Like, you know, are you just surfing on the internet? Are you actually working? Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, and I, I've been in those roles as well. Where it's just like, look, it takes me three hours a day to come into the office. At like in total, I could sit at home and do that and do work for those three hours instead. I, you know how it is with sourcing. Like you might, you might not be productive during the day, but then you find that right string in the evening, yeah. and you're gonna work until midnight because you just you find all the people you really wanted. Um, yeah. I, I can't tell you that I work from nine to whatever because it, it depends what, you know, how it just pans out. And that's what my team does. Yeah, it's exciting, you know, that, uh, you know, I was thinking that I'm, I'm only the one who experienced in this regarding what you, what you were saying. Like, uh, are you just, you know, scrolling the, <laughs> the feed or maybe you are source for the roles? <laughs> Why are you on Facebook? You can't source from there. It's like, actually, let yeah. me show you a couple of things. But it's like, yeah, yeah it just looks like you're doing social media all day. <laughs> it's so funny, really. I'm so happy that, you know, I'm not the one. <laughs> no. Anything else you kind of wanted to share? For now, I think that I shared pretty, pretty, pretty everything uh, I wanted to share. So, uh, looking forward really to SourceCon to finally see you and yeah, see you in person and uh, having a current conversation. Thanks, Mark. People want to stay in touch with you and see all the, the you know the gold nuggets that you're sharing every week. How do they uh, can they best do that? Uh, I would say that um, you know I will share uh, my like my new find on every social media mm -hmm. profile, but uh, still my suggestion would be uh, to send a request to Growth Hacking Recruiters Group <laughs> because you know for now uh, it's a kind of the place where I'm you know I, I would say share the most of my finds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, still, for those who are curious enough, they will find everything like on LinkedIn or on my Twitter or on my blog. Look very much forward to seeing you and thank you very much, Dennis. Same here, Mark. Bye. Right. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back next week with a new sourcing conversation. To be one of the first ones to know about new episodes, make sure you subscribe to this channel.